We are here to celebrate uh, Black History Month. This is my third event. I attended two yesterday, and I have many more uh, uh, to go. And this is a time that uh, uh, it is filled with energy and excitement, but also a time where we reflect on the past, where we are today, and what we need to do to move together into the future. I think someone also called it, uh, what was that, Sam, what we called it yesterday? Not just Black History Month, but Black Futures Month. Black Futures Month. Black Futures Month. Which means that in this city, in this community, we need to acknowledge and we need to recognize that black Edmontonians have faced numerous barriers and how we need to work together to overcome those barriers that we can build a brighter future for them and for everyone. And that starts with engaging with communities. I'm so, so proud to say that uh, uh, this city council has taken anti-racism work very, very seriously. When we elected our first inaugural motion, you know when inaugural motions are made, as Sam yesterday, said yesterday at the, uh, the celebration that we had, they're mainly about economy. They're mainly about, you know, business growth. Very important aspirations for a community. But we made it our first inaugural motion about anti-racism. Because we knew that in order to build a stronger economy, in order to build that economic growth and business growth that we aspire to do so, we cannot do that if people are being held down. When people are being held down, we are being held down. So we acknowledge that. And then we engaged with the community. We had 1,000 conversations with the community members over a number of months. And that informed City's anti-black racism action plan. We launched that action plan, action plan, action, action plan uh, you can tell the English, uh, the English is also as action plan. Right? Uh, action plan uh, 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 late last year, with implementing that action plan. There are three components to the anti-racism work, and I'll briefly talk about that, and I'll shut up and sit down and uh, and listen to the rest of the uh, activities. So community told us that there got to be three pillars to the anti-racism action plan for us to be back. First pillar, that we need to build a community-based organization that will guide and lead community's work for Edmonton to be truly an anti-racist city. So we are undertaking that work. We will be building an independent community-run, community-based, under by the city, properly supported by other organizations as well. So that we will be reaching out to you as well as to our provincial uh, uh, elected officials for support and to the community and business. So we are setting that organization up. It will be transformational change because government can support, but community can lead the work. So what is the first one pillar? The second pillar is that as an organization, as a corporation, City of Edmonton is a big organization. We have a $3 billion annual budget. And we invest close to $7 billion over the next six years in the infrastructure that we build. We hire 12,000 people. And how many people work for this city? And we provide 71 lines of services to Edmonton. So if as a corporation we do not commit to be anti-racist, we can't expect others to do that. What does mean is that everything that we do should be accessible and equitable for everyone. So we are undertaking that work and we are setting up a high level office in the city of Edmonton, the city manager's office, to guide that work. And you have started seeing some changes already in how we deliver our services. Equity, the equity lens that we apply to assess. And I'm proud to tell you. We have five senior executive leaders in our management leading our city's work in various departments. We never had a black person 
among that leadership. That is changing. We are hiring the first black person to lead city government in communications department. It is a transformation. And the third pillar is sustainable funding for community organizations. Number of community organizations here struggle for funding because they have to apply for program funding, they have to apply for annual funding. And they struggle to, to, on the reporting, they struggle on many other things. So instead of focusing on work, organizations are directly forced to focus on finding funding. What we want to do is create sustainable, ongoing, predictable funding for organizations. We allocated $3.5 million for their work. We allocated $5 million for grant funding that you will get uh, on a sustainable, long-term basis. And we're mobilizing community assets to do that. Uh, we're mobilizing other community uh, businesses as well as in partnership with, uh, with other organizations. We take this work very seriously because we know that for us to succeed, we need to build an event center for all of us. Which means it does not matter when you came to this country. It does not matter what your skin color is, what your sexual orientation is, what your heritage, what your culture is. Our diversity, our difference, differences are our strength. Once we stop those celebrating those differences, we become a weaker people. When we start celebrating those differences, we become a stronger community. And that is our goal, unlocking the potential of everyone in this city. That starts with acknowledging that inequities, injustice has held us back. And we're changing that, but it's a transformation of generational work. And it will require community's leadership. So we're here to work with you. So that is the true meaning of celebrating Black History Month or Black Future Month.